My sisters and brothers, I am Father Virgil Petermeyer, a member of the Order of the Holy Cross, is 800 years old, and we're normally called croziers because we wear this cross, the red and white cross on our chest, which symbolizes the blood and water that flowed out of Jesus on the cross. But actually, he poured himself out to build a world of love. He could spot love even in tax collectors, Roman soldiers, uh, prostitutes, and he loved beyond the social and religious norms. And that ki they, they killed him for that. But his risen spirit now sends us on the same mission. And so in 1958, the first American croziers went to Indonesia, to the easternmost province of Indonesia. And to go there, I'm going to wear this uh, headband just to indicate that we're in a, one of the most unique dioceses in the world, the Diocese of Agats. And why do I say unique? It's the only diocese in the world that goes underwater several uh, days of each month, and especially June, July, December, and January, when three to four feet of tide waters cover the diocese. Add on to that nine to 12 feet of rain in a year. And then you can imagine that travel is only done on very narrow rivers to ones that are almost a mile wide with dugout canoes, speedboats, and small ships. Add on to that, all towns and villages are off the ground four to six feet. So another reason that this place, uh, this diocese is so unique in the world, because 90% of its population are hunters and food gatherers living off the forest, uh, the jungle, and the river. Plus, only 60 years ago, God succeeded through the help of this book that was brought by the missionaries to help these people become free or set aside warfare where they use shields like this and they were cannibals. They ate their victims because they believed that they would become stronger people physically, spiritually, and socially. When I went to my first parish in 1977, my, my next door neighbor across the little creek was Mr. Asinek. And when I would visit this wonderful uh, grandfather, I'd sit in front of his fireplace, and beside the fireplace was a cord with five trophy skulls, human trophy skulls. But this wonderful grandfather would thank the bishop for having sent missionaries years ago so that now the people can travel between the villages, wives can go fishing and hunting for shrimp without fearing attack. These people really are a very expressive people. They, they enjoy teasing one another, teasing us as well. They're resilient. But the bishop, on my last visit, uh, last November and December of 2019, raised the concern that the local people, the local Papuans, are now, or already have become, uh, a minority in their own land. So his concern is, how do we build a church, raise, uh, grow a community, so that all people, whether they're minority or not, from all these different tribes of Indonesia and Papua can live together as sisters and brothers, respecting one another. So how is that done? Uh, oh, I, I want to say too, another concern of the bishop and all of us is the fact that over the last 80 years, this is a relatively short time. These people went from using a stone ax to cut down a tree, and now they're able to use a smartphone or a mobile phone to talk with one another. That's a huge change. And uh, the big, then the biggest changes came, of course, because over that same time period, thousands of people came in as teachers, medical people, police, military, missionaries, uh, merchants, and they brought with them their own cultures and influences, including two that were never there before, alcohol and tobacco. And now, unfortunately, these people are addicted to both. Um, new diseases came in, leprosy and AIDS. Fortunately, coronavirus, not yet anyhow, and we hope it stays that way. But these people battled years ago with malaria, dysentery, pneumonia, intestinal parasites, all kinds of skin diseases. 50% of the toddlers would die before they got to school when I first came there in 74. 
Okay, so what are my Indonesian Crozier brothers and fathers and a growing group of diocesan priests and four small groups of nuns, what are they doing in this area to meet the needs of the people and grow a church? One, provide the best education they can. So we give scholarships to young men and women to become uh, medical personnel or teachers. We gave a scholarship to two brothers years ago and one now is the rector of the uh, biggest university in Papua and the other one is the second man in charge of the government in Agats. Wonderful men. A second kind of education is training men and women to be civil leaders but especially to be church leaders in all these villages. We have a hundred and more villages, Catholic villages, spread throughout this jungle. So they're the ones that have to know this Bible and be convinced of Jesus, be convinced Christians, so that they can even lead the church services on Sunday because the pastors can't get to all these places every Sunday. Another piece of, infra, uh, of um, training is training new crozier brothers and priests, as well as diocesan priests and nuns and brothers. Okay, and training them in such a way that they can enjoy living in this swampy situation and consider all these people of various shades of color and what as their brothers and sisters and sit and listen to them and their problems and also to accept their hospitality, eating their smoked fish, their local bread and even uh, jungle bacon, the sago grub worms. Another piece that uh, we are concerned about is uh, enough worship space, new churches. Some churches are getting too old, including the cathedral. We need to build a new cathedral, so we need help on that. So my brothers and sisters, I come to you this uh, today to ask for your help. And so I ask you, could you afford one or two family-sized pizzas for our family on the other side of the world? Or some of you may be able to look at eight to ten thousand dollars to sponsor a seminarian, all in, living costs and tuition. If you write out a check for, uh, for your donation, uh, write it out to your parish, and in the memo section, write Crozier Missions, and it will get to us. Okay? I'm going to end this appeal with the sign of the cross in the national language, and you say, Amin. Okay, ready to sign yourselves? Atas nama Bapa, Putra, dan Roh Kudus. Amen. And if your amen was strong, that means you want to go there. And if you can't go there directly, then go with your donation. Terima kasih. Thank you very much.